How are you doing, math learners? This is your free access math teacher, Ash. And welcome to ML with Sir Ash. For today's lesson, we're going to discuss how to simplify radicals. This is an application as well as going deeper lesson on the law of radicals. Also, this lesson is a prerequisite before going to the operations on radicals. But before anything else, hit the subscribe button and notification bell for you to be updated of these cool clear math videos just like this. Hello math learners! Welcome to another session here in Math Learning with Sir Ash. Today, we're going to discuss the most essential learning competency-based lesson for quarter 2 of the grade 9 mathematics, which is all about simplifying radicals. The question is, how do we simplify radicals? In simplifying radicals, basically, you will just be applying all what you have learned in the law of radicals. Remember that in the law of radicals, we have the four basic laws and we also apply the fifth law which is the rationalization if in any case that we will encounter a radical sign in the denominator side now for you to understand well in simplifying radicals let us consider these seven examples okay first problem is that it is the cube root of 32 how do we solve the cube root of 32 first thing you should know is what is the index of this given problem it is the cube root right so if it is the cube root of 32, then you will try whether your radicand is a perfect cube. Now, question is, 32, is it a perfect cube? No. However, we can dissect or we can break down 32 into its factors in which one factor is a perfect cube. Since this is 32, basically, the factors for cube root of 32 are the cube root of 8, and the cube root of 4. Now, remember, my dear students, always write first the perfect cube or the number that has a principal root. In this case, 8 has the principal root because 8 is a perfect cube. Okay, so the question is, what is the cube root of 8? Okay, that is 2. Next, is there a cube root of 4? No. If that's the case, then what you will do is you just copy your cube root of 4 and that will be your final answer. Easy, right? Now, let's go to the second problem. We have the sixth root of x to the power of 20. Question is, how do we solve this one? We have a variable with an exponent of 20 and our index is 6. So, what you can do here can be done in two ways. The first one is by the use of the rational exponents. And the second one is by the factoring method. Now, since the index is 6, therefore, you will factor this x to the power of 20 by powers of 6. And how do we do that? That is by this one. So, that is 6 root of x to the 6, x to the 6, x to the 6, and x to the 2, or x squared. As you can see, if I add all my exponents, it will become x to the 20. Now, why did I do this? If you consider, this will give me 6 divided by 6. 6 divided by 6. 6 divided by 6. So, therefore, I will have 3 x's that can be cancelled by 6. So, giving me x cubed. And then, since x squared and the index of 6 are not applicable for cancellation, then what we can do here is we can simplify 2 and 6. What is the lowest term of 2 and 6? And that is 1 third. So therefore, this will become cube root of x. And that will be your final answer. Now, if you want to know how to solve this one using the rational exponents, you just do this into a rational exponent. And that will become x to the power of 20 over 6. This will give you x to the power of 10 over 3. And of course, 10 over 3 is equal to 3 and 1 third. Having 3 and 1 third, you can have x to the power of 3 and x to the power of 1 third. x to the power of 3 is this one, and x to the power of 1 third can be converted into a radical expression, and that will be cube root of x. Easy, right? So therefore, either way, whatever your solution, you will still have your final answer. Now, let us go to the third example. 
Okay, math learners, for our third example, we have the fourth root of 1 over 2m. Question is, can we simplify 1 over 2m? Okay, since this is already in its lowest term, what we can do is we can apply the third rule of the law of radicals and we can have the fourth root of 1 over the fourth root of 2m. Now, of course, the fourth root of 1 is equal to 1. While the fourth root of 2m is still the fourth root of 2m. Now, the question is, is this our final answer? Not yet. Why? Because in this case, we have a radical sign in the denominator side. And if that is the case, we need to apply the fifth rule and that is the rationalization. So, we will try to multiply the whole fraction by the needed factor in order for this 2m to become a perfect power of 4. So, how do we do that? Now, what is the next number after 1 to become the next power of 4? So basically, if we will use the principal root of 2, then we will have 2 times 2, 4 times 2, 8 times 2, 16. So the next number, which is a power of 4, is 16. Question is, what is needed by 2 to become 16? Okay, and that is 4th root of 8 because 8 times 2 is 16 which will become a perfect power of 4 okay now how about m m here has only one exponent right but it needs to have three more in order for it to become a perfect power of 4 so we need m cubed so if that's the case if we multiply this factor in the denominator side we will also multiply 4th root of 8 m cubed in the numerator side. So now we will multiply numerators and we will multiply denominators giving us 1 times 4th root of 8 m cubed that will become 4th root of 8 m cubed. Now, the 4th root of 2 m times the 4th root of 8 m cubed that will give us the 4th root of 16 m to the fourth so basically this is a perfect power of four so what we will do is we'll just copy our numerator that is eight m cubed fourth root of eight m cubed and then the principal root of the fourth root of 16 m to the fourth is two m and that will be your final answer now my dear math learners let me emphasize this one that in terms of getting the root of a number if your index is even, there are possible two roots, the positive and the negative side. However, in this matter, in simplifying radicals, we will be talking on the principal roots. Okay? So, I'm just getting the principal roots of these given expressions. Okay? Easy, right? So, now let us go to our fourth example. We have the square root of 54. So, we are talking about square root. It is the power of 2. So, question is, is 54 a perfect square? Okay, it isn't, right? So now the question is, what factors of 54 in order for it to be simplified? So, basically, if we will use 4, can we use 4 here? No, we can't use 4. How about 9? Okay, we can use 9. So 54 is a factor of 9. So we will have square root of 9 and square root of 6. I'll just make a border here. Okay. So, we have here square root of 9 and square root of 6. If we multiply them, we will arrive to square root of 54, right? Okay. So, having this, we will simplify square root of 9 and that is 3. We will simplify square root of 6, but it is not a perfect square. So, we will just copy this one and that will be your final answer. Easy, right? So, now let's go to our fifth example. We have here the square root of 16, x to the fourth, y to the seventh. Okay. It is a combination of constants and variables so as we know 16 is a perfect square and the square root of 16 is 4 right okay now 4 x to the fourth is also a perfect square so what is the square root of x to the fourth you will just divide your exponent to your index so if it is a square root the index is 2 so 4 divided by 2 that is x squared okay so we will have x Squared. Now let's go to the y. 7. Question is, 
is 7 or y to the 7 a perfect square? Okay, it's not divisible, right? So what we can do here is we can dissect y to the 7. And how do we do that? We can have y squared, y squared, y squared, and y. So if we will consider the perfect squares, the square root of y squared is y. The square root of y squared is y. The square root of y squared is y. However, the square root of y here is still the square root of y. So we will have three y's and that will give us y cubed. However, there is still a radical expression left. So we will just copy that one and that will give us 4x squared y cubed square root of y. Easy, right? So now let us go to our sixth example. What is the sixth root of x to the sixth? Question is, can we simplify this one? Now, if, if in any case you will be having a hard time knowing the sixth root of a number, you just consider the principal roots. Okay, so 2 times 2, 4 times 2, 8 times 2, 16. I only have 2 to the power of 4. This is in the sixth root. So therefore, it's still the sixth root of 16. Okay, now, how about for the variable? We have the sixth root of x to the sixth. That is an example of our first law. So if that is the case, we can cancel the sixth, the sixth in the index and the sixth in the power, giving us a variable of x. So we will have x sixth root of 16. And that will be your final answer. Easy, right? And now let us go to our final example. We have the fourth root of 9a cubed y squared over 8b6, b to the power of 6, x cubed. Okay, so question is, is there a perfect power of 4 in the given? Okay, so first, the variables are different, so there will be no simplification inside the radical sign. Okay, so what we can do here is we can just copy the fourth root of 9a cubed y squared, okay? And we will have the fourth root of 8b6 x cubed, okay? So, as you can see in this given example, my dear math learners, 9 is not a perfect power of 4. Cube is less than the index of 4. 2 is less than the index of 4. So, we cannot do anything about it because this is already simplified. Now, how about in the denominator side? 8 is not a perfect power of 4. B6, 6 is greater than 4. So, we can simplify this one with the use of b to the 4 and b squared. And if this is the fourth root. So, we can apply something here. So, therefore, we will have the fourth root of 9a cubed y squared. And we will have b. Okay? fourth root of 8b squared x cubed. Now, having this, my dear math learners, basically, the numerator and the denominator is already in its simplest form. However, for final answer, it is a violation if we have a radical sign in the denominator side. So, we will now apply the rationalization. How do we apply that one? Okay, so let's just copy first our given. That is the fourth root of 9 a cube y squared divided by b times the fourth root of 8 b squared x cube. So now my dear math learners, we will try to eliminate the fourth root symbol in the denominator side. So how do we do that? Okay, so 8 is a perfect cube, not a perfect power of 4. So we need to multiply it. 2a, 4th root of 2, in order for this to become 16. Now, b squared here needs another power of 2, so it needs another b squared in order for it to become 4. You follow? And then we have x, because it is already x cubed here, so it just needs another x for it to become a perfect cube. Okay, so if we multiply this kind of expression in the denominator, we will also apply that one in the numerator. Okay, giving us 2 times 9. That is the fourth root of 18. And then, a cube 
b squared, I'll just follow the alphabetical order, x and y squared. And then, here, I will have the fourth root of, I still have the b outside, okay? 8 times 2, that is 16. b squared times b squared, that will be b to the fourth. x cubed times x, that will be x to the fourth. Okay. So now, I can simplify this one, giving me the fourth root of 18 a cubed b squared x y squared over so the fourth root of 16 is 2 the fourth root of b to the 4 is b and there is another b here so b times b that will be b squared the fourth root of x to the fourth is x and this will be your final answer challenging right but i'm sure with constant practice this will become easy now this is the time that I will challenge you whether you have understood our topic for today and here it is. Okay, math learners, I hope you have a wonderful time in simplifying radicals. There are a lot of ways to simplify radicals and what you need to do is you just apply what you have learned in the law of radicals. And if you think that there are some questions or confusions in this discussion, do not hesitate to put your inquiries in our comment section below. This is still your free access math teacher Ash and always remember, it is fun to learn mathematics if we are together learning. Thank you for subscribing, liking this video, and sharing this to your friends, classmates, and schoolmates. Take care, God bless, and keep safe always. Congratulations math learners for arriving to this part of the video. If you think that this video have helped you, click that like button. And if you think that this channel can change the way you see mathematics, do not forget to click that subscribe button and notification bell. Thank you.